In the previous video, we discussed how to fit an axe head to a new handle. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about how you can wedge that handle and that axe head to give you a permanent fit that will hopefully last a lifetime. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the homestead. Nothing's changed since the last video. I just stopped recording the last one and started recording this one. So I have a black walnut wedge, you can see here, and I have it cut to fit this ax head. Now I bought oversized wedges off of eBay knowing that I'm gonna have to trim them to fit and that's the best way to do it in my opinion. Every handle that I've seen comes with both a wooden wedge and a metal wedge, but more often than not, the wooden wedges are bare minimum warped, if not cracked. So it's typically better to just buy some new wedges, some nicer wedges. Now I cut it to shape and I also just slightly, now this isn't critical, I don't wanna make it seem like this is something that you have to do. I also beveled just a little bit right here, basically this direction, if that makes sense. It's very minute, it's very minor. The reason I did that is specifically because of this style head here. If you recall, the way that this is shaped, we're gonna have basically about half as much wood poking out of the top on the front as we do on the back. That's gonna cause this wedge to bind and it's, it's just gonna be really hard for it to fit properly through here. So making it a little bit thinner at the bottom and thicker at the top is going to allow, allow it to more or less match the taper of the eye. If you know about axes, the bottom of the eye is smaller than the top. So if we taper it to fit the top and, you know, just taper it down slightly, what will happen is it should, in theory, match up with that, especially as you're hammering the wedge in and those fibers are compressing. You'll see what I mean. Even though this is a very minor taper that you may not even be able to tell, it will work for us. The other thing that I'm going to do, again, specifically because of this axe head and the style, is I'm going to shave off the edges, the corners, on what will be the front of the wedge, what will be facing the front of the blade. And I'm just gonna use my pocket knife for that. All I'm gonna be doing, you can see where I have a mark right there and right there on either side. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shave off, shave off that corner. That's it. Now, obviously it's better to do this on a workbench and I do plan on doing it on a workbench here in a second, but just for demonstration purposes to show you, that's all I'm doing. I'm just shaving off that little bit. That way it'll, again, similar to tapering it, hopefully fit inside the ax a little bit better. It's not gonna be perfect. It's very difficult for to get perfection, but if we can at least get it to fit a little better, that's what we're after. Hopefully you can tell right there that that edge is all rounded off and will fit through that eye a little bit better. Now, if I show you though, the wedge only goes that far into the ax head. So how, how is it gonna fit in there when we're driving it into the handle? Well, what's gonna happen, what I'm talking about with regards to the fibers compressing and matching that bevel, as the eye gets tighter towards the base, the fibers of the wood, because remember, we're dealing with a bunch of drinking straws and just like drinking straws, you can compress wood fiber. So what's gonna happen, as we're driving this wedge in, not only are we going to be forcing both sides of the top of the handle out in either direction, but we're also gonna be compressing these fibers both in and together, if that makes sense. So both this way, because you know all the force that's gonna be generated between these two wings and the wedge, as well as front to back, because again, eye tapers down. So these fibers are gonna compress and that's gonna make the inside here super, super tight. That's what we're after. Now the other thing that we're gonna look at is how far can we fit this wedge down into the kerf here, down into the cut. And you can see that if I wanted this wedge to sit flat, 
we still need to come down about a quarter inch. That's not that big of a deal, but nevertheless, I wanted to mention that because if you were to do the final fit and wedge this, you probably would do okay, especially with how wide that wedge is. You would be fine if you were using these specific pieces. However, in different circumstances, generally speaking, it's better if you could get the wedge to sit all the way down. Not just, you know, leave it exposed a little bit, but in my opinion, this is all my opinion, I prefer to seat it all the way down to where we are getting a full spread from this wedge. It's, it's basically spreading the wood as much as it can possibly go. Now let's show you how that curve looks. So if we're to compare, I'll actually do it this way. If we bottom out the wedge, we still have about a sixteenth of an inch. Hopefully you can see that right there. And that's what you want. You want to have a little bit of the wedge exposed, at least in theory. Ideally, in my mind again, you want this wedge to be completely seated down into the handle. However, when you are cutting the curve, when you're trying to figure out how deep you want to make it, don't go all the way down. Because not only are we talking about, again, fibers compressing to where we can compress these fibers down and scrunch this a little bit, but also the edge right here, the edge of this wedge, it's pretty sharp. So what'll happen once that bottoms out, not only is it gonna scrunch, but it's also going to, I shouldn't say break, but it is going to deform, I guess is a better way of putting it, a, a lawyeristic way of putting it. It's going to deform and kind of round out and flatten out on that bottom to fill in the gaps. Again, hopefully I'm making sense with all this. So I'm gonna bring my piece of wood over here, my block of wood, and I think we are just about ready to go. I can't think of anything that I'm forgetting. So we're going to fit the head on. And this head is so heavy being as it's a five pounder that I don't need to hammer on the back here, but I'm still gonna show you how to do that nevertheless. So getting a rough fit again, making sure it's square, which she's square. And right there, we're already set pretty good. Now take your dead blow or preferably not a hammer, but something heavy with a large blunt surface. And I'm actually going to be using my Grand First Brook splitting mall because it's so heavy. What you wanna do is hit straight, square, flat, whatever you wanna say, on the bottom of the handle. You wanna hold it with a loose grip. What'll happen, another thing you want, I should mention, have a piece of wood or carpet, cattle mat, something underneath you so that if you lose your grip and this ax falls to the floor, you're not gonna chip the edge. Ask me how I learned that one. So holding it with a loose, loose grip, I'm gonna take our heavy hammer, mallet, whatever, and see how it slipped down through my hands? We're gonna do that a couple more times. Take a look, it's a little bit seated further down, if that makes sense, it's a little bit further than when I was just hitting it on the block of wood. So I'm gonna say we are more or less set. And if I'm gonna show you, you could look at that fit and that's a pretty bang on fit right there. I'm happy with that. Now, with regards to the wedge, this is where Things get interesting, things get a little tricky. I'm not gonna lie, wedging is the main part that I get worried about and kind of get a little anxious about because if it goes wrong, you gotta start all over again. And it's not just start all over again with regards to redo the handle, you gotta take it out of the damn eye too, which that's a whole other thing. Like I said in the first video, it's just, it's a chore. So we're gonna to try to avoid that the best we can and we're gonna to try to drive this wedge 
flat, straight, and true, just like when we were hammering on the bottom of the handle here. Now, in order to do this, I'm gonna use my wood block once again, and I'm also going to be using one of my wedge banger axes because it matches, the pole on the back matches the wedge better. So we can hopefully not split it. If it does split, hopefully it happens once it's seated pretty far down. Now, debate rages on whether you should glue your wedges or whether you should just use oil or nothing at all. I personally like to glue my wedges. That's just because I don't want them popping out. Uh, I'm going to grab said wedge banger, which is, may not be able to see that. It's a W Hunt axe, W Hunt, made by the Douglas Axe Manufacturing Co. Made in, that'd be June of 1872. This is an old axe. Got it restored, rehung, whole nine from Wyoming Axe and Saw. If you don't know who that is, check him out on Instagram. He does amazing work both with axes as well as saws, hence the name. This is what we're gonna be using to seat that wedge because again, the size and shape of the pole is a lot better and a lot more advantageous than using either the mallet, which is rounded and also beat up on that end, or the Grand Force Brooks splitting maul, which wouldn't strike the entirety of the wedge. We would only be striking maybe about that much. So, you know, a little more than three quarter, but still you wanna strike the entirety of the wedge. So without any further ado, I'm gonna stop yapping. Take your glue, wood glue, and you don't need much with this. You only want to spread it on the bottom portion of the wedge. And even then, you're probably still going to have some glue running out. That's all right. You'll survive. So that's it. Just a very light amount of glue, only on the bottom half. And once again, I'm still probably going to have a little bit of blowout, a little bit of excess, but that's all right. So when you're fitting the wedge in here, kind of goes without saying, but you want to get it as straight and true as possible. And this is where I am going to be using my mallet just to kind of tap her in a little bit. Like I say, tap, tap, tap a -roo. Once we get inside the eye, once the wedge, the ends of the wedge, once both sides get inside the eye, once they get past there, that's when we can start being a little bit more aggressive. You want to be careful doing this too because the axe can easily slip. Let me see, I'm going to angle the camera down so hopefully you can see a little better. The axe can easily slip when you're doing this and strike over here and really mar up your axe. So you want to make sure that Staying consistent, slow is not bad with this. And once it starts to feel like it's getting too tough, use our wooden block. Now flip her around. I'm gonna use splitting maul this time. Sometimes just need to brute force it again onto the piece of wood, not onto concrete. Getting close there, getting close. All right, now. You can see 
that it is sticking up a little bit and you could also see that it's cracked and beat up and all that. I am not concerned about that because we used glue. That's why. If we were just setting it in there with oil or something, then yeah, I would be worried. This glue is going to bond anything that breaks with either side. So when we trim it off, even if we see like little cracks here and there, I'm not worried about it. The glue is going to do a good enough job bonding the wedge to either side. It'll be safe. And that, while it's not as deep as I would have liked it to have gone, it's a tight fit. We're even starting to crack over here, which again, not something to be worried about. It's not good necessarily, but it happens. So with all that, I'm going to let this set for a little while and then we're going to trim her off. Oil her up, call her a party. So when it comes to trimming this, it's all up to you. You can trim it flush with the ax. You can leave it as high as you want it. It's all personal preference. This head is set. Hopefully it's not gonna go anywhere. Now, if you do want to put a metal wedge in, whether that be a round wedge, like a barrel wedge, or one of the stepped wedges that typically come with these handles, you are gonna wanna trim this down. And if you do wanna add those, you're gonna wanna cut it more or less flush. For myself, I'm going to cut it at an angle. I'm gonna to try to cut it at an angle, make it look a little nicer. Normally I cut them flush, but I think this one would just not only look better, but also perform better because if you have this big section, like if I was gonna trim it flush here, you could see how it's flush up on top, but then below we have this big section that's sticking up. That can kind of get hung up in the brush and stuff when you're working, so it's better if it's trimmed short, but I still like to leave them a little proud. Hopefully I'm not over explaining myself like always. I switched over to the pull saw just because to finish up this cut, it's a little bit easier. Plus the ends of the coping saw kind of interfere with the ax head a little bit, so just makes it easier all around. Yeah. That looks really nice. Last thing I'm going to do here before sanding, branding, and oiling is just chamfer the top edge here a little bit. It's not super important, but I think it not only looks better, but again, if you got it caught on a piece of brush or something, just makes it a little bit easier for working and whatnot. And there she is. I think that turned out pretty damn good if you ask me. Fits well, wedge looks good. Balance is pretty crazy because it's a five pound ax. It balances all the way up here, but nevertheless, feels really good in the hands. This will be a problem solver on a back leaning tree when you need to pound some wedges, that's for sure. Now it's time for the final steps. When you've got four months before the snow falls down, you rise every morning and head on it. You chop chop till they hit the ground and echo through the forest there's nothing like the sound of sharp axes straight trees some are for burning and some are for being sharp axes 